we're at a point in basketball history where you can flip on any random NBA game and see something absolutely beautiful and breathtaking that you wouldn't have seen in the first hundred years of the sport. Here's a center racing the ball up the floor, slipping a bounce pass to a cutting guard, who then moves it to the corner so it can skip around the horn to an open shooter who drills a 30-foot three. In four seconds of Nirvana, the basketball touched all five players without ever hitting the hardwood, and it was all started by a big man. We've reached a point where centers initiate offense like point guards, well-coordinated screening and movement bends defenses to the breaking point, and one team in particular has combined these forces to create a shockingly effective offense around its playmaking center and its movement shooters. Sports are a copycat industry. One team wins a title, and the other teams often scramble to emulate them. The Golden State Warriors have made six straight NBA Finals when their core of Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson are all healthy, grabbing four rings in the process. Yet, most teams in the league don't play like the Warriors. That's a little weird, right? Like, why isn't the entire league stealing from the most dominant dynasty of the 21st century? According to Synergy's play tracking, since 2016, the average NBA team scores off of a movement play, meaning a screen, cut, or handoff, about 17% of the time. This has remained steady every year, with most teams a few percentage points higher or lower. But more than 25% of Golden State's offense usually comes from movement actions, lapping the league every year. So the league hasn't produced a bunch of Golden State copycats, probably because it's hard to replicate the shooting and cutting of the Splash Brothers and the passing of forwards like Draymond and Andre Iguodala. But their influence has slowly crept into the league. For instance, a number of teams now run these split cuts, a Warriors staple where two players screen and cut off each other without the ball. One of those teams is the Sacramento Kings, led by new coach Mike Brown, who, not so coincidentally, spent the last six seasons as an assistant coach for the Warriors. And he's taken a few concepts with him up the road to Sacramento. One of these is the split action, but the Kings also have a little of that movement shooting, with newcomer Kevin Herter playing like a diet Steph Curry role, moving around off the ball, and then attacking a little with the ball after he catches it. Herter starts this trip coming off a screen, then goes down to set a screen, only so he can curl back up off another one for a catch and shoot, and after the smoothest of pump fakes, shows why he goes by red velvet. This time, Herter feels the defense shifting toward one side of the floor, so right as his teammate passes, he cuts to the basket, and that pass might briefly be open, but Draymond recovers to shut it off, and then Herter relocates to the corner, a Curry specialty, only to touch pass it to their other deadly shooter, Malik Monk. Monk doesn't move as much as Herter, but he's at 43% on wide open threes since 2021, and he can also move into his three-point shots, especially off of dribble handoff action. And like Herter, Monk isn't just a threat to shoot in these spots. He can flow into on-ball action and create as a passer or score himself. This can lead to some beautiful game possessions, with moving, passing, and cutting blending together for easy offense. And it's led to a rise in movement possessions this year for the Kings, jumping from the middle of the pack all the way up to second this season behind Golden State. So they don't move quite as much as the Warriors, but they've certainly borrowed some of their concepts. Herter flies out of the paint around a corner screen, and his gravity pulls Curry and a second defender out of the way for an open dunk. A play like this one just combines a ton of popular moving and screening principles. Monk sets a back pick, then flies off another screen, and all that screening can confuse inexperienced defenders, so Monk ends up with a giant alley to attack, and he's been a really strong finisher this year. Mm. This one's a quintessential king set, with Demonis Sabonis at the elbow, split cuts involving Herder, 
and if they fizzle out, he flows right into a handoff. And Red Velvet can playmake effectively off that action back to Sabonis. And that brings us to the second great team, or really great player, that the Kings have emulated to create this offense. While the Warriors have differentiated from pick and roll teams with their movement, the Nuggets have built elite offenses around Nikola Jokic's playmaking in the middle of the floor. Jokic, the reigning two-time MVP, and one of the best offensive players ever for my money, hits cutters from the high post and plays a ton of two-man games, running handoffs with his guards, and then coming back to receive the ball, and from there he can attack in a variety of ways. Most teams run some offense from the elbow or use handoff sets in one way or another, but the Kings have their own Jokic light in Sabonis. He's not the complete offensive savant that Jokic is, but he can serve as another point guard on the floor and harmonize with Sacramento's shooters. One Denver staple is Jokic dribbling at a teammate in the corner on an empty side of the floor, and the Kings can run the same action with Sabonis, and because he's such a gifted downhill finisher, he can get it back and score. A big part of Sacramento's offense is running plays through Demonis at the top of the key, and this connects their motion offense with their Jokic offense. A wing cuts through, Herter fakes not one but two back doors to lose his defender, and coming downhill, he feathers it back to Sabonis for an agile finish. All of these plays have beautiful natural counters that are hard to guard. It's the same action this time, but De'Aaron Fox cuts backdoor, shows a little patience, and draws help to dime up a cutting teammate. These principles have made Sacramento one of the most efficient offenses in the league this year, and per synergy, they're the second most efficient half-court team per play, if we exclude putbacks. But the Kings are also the second fastest pace team in the league, pushing it down court before defenses are set and generating good early offense. And the fastest player on this very fast team is, fittingly, their star point guard, Fox. De'Aaron is one of the fastest players in the league, and his pace puts pressure on defenses early. The shot clock is at 18 here. There's at least one open three in the corner, but a layup is even better. So there's a little seven seconds or less in the Kings as well. Those Steve Nash and Mike D'Antoni teams were some of the best offenses in NBA history and have had a widespread influence on the league ever since, including on Steve Kerr's Warriors, who have also posted some of the fastest paced offenses of the 21st century over the last few seasons. The Kings will push the pace even after a make, Notice Kevin Durant stops to talk to the officials, Nick Claxton starts jogging, and that's all it takes for Fox, because there's no big man back in the lane, and this defender doesn't want to leave the corner, so Fox wisely cuts it back against the recovering defender and turns that into a three-point play. On this one, watch the big men. Fox is about even with them, but he just hits the gas to beat them down the court, which means there isn't a shot blocker to help when he decelerates nicely and finishes. Fox's recognition has been great in these spots. His man crashes the glass, and that's all it takes to find an opening. This looks like a three on four, but someone new now needs to guard Fox. So until Caleb Martin gets back in his path, this is really a two on one on the near side of the floor, Fox recognizes it and turns it into another easy score. De'Aaron might actually be their best offensive player right now, thanks to a jump in outside shooting to start this season. He's still inconsistent compared to high-level passers, but he's shooting a blazing 52% from the mid-range this season, and his body control setting up these shots has made a huge difference. And it's not like the Kings don't run pick and rolls with Fox and their other playmaking guards. But these actions aren't vanilla. For instance, they'll look for a cutter first, then he'll sit in the lane and he can go screen in the Spain pick and roll. We talked about these evolutionary pick and roll actions last season, and the Kings use them regularly. This time the guard doesn't screen and pulls his man right out of the way. And I love how Sacramento blends all these strengths. 
Sabonis flows into a handoff. He's dangerous as a roller, but there's movement here too. Instead of screening, Terrence Davis slips back door and cuts all the way across the floor. So Herter can set a little screen, and while everyone is worried about the ball, it turns into an open corner three. Of course, if you overreact to a corner cut like that while the pick and roll is happening, it opens the door for Sabonis on the roll. And this is the beauty of the Kings offense to me. They have multiple playmakers who can push the pace in transition, and they can flow from movement actions into elbow offense through Sabonis with a ton of movement and screening that taxes defenses. Here's what Warriors coach Steve Kerr had to say about them after their last game. And offensively, they've really built a, an identity, you know, um, with, the, with the shooting uh, and the, uh, the downhill DHO stuff with Sabonis. It's tough to guard, so um, Mike has done a, a terrific job. Think about guarding all these options. Herter can curl around this screen or go back door. Then he can cut out of the paint in a number of different directions, set a back screen in Spain pick and roll, or cut to the near corner. Instead, he sets a screen, then curls to the top, and the backup is Sabonis offense. And because other players are constantly moving, a brief lapse turns into an easy shot right at the rim. That pass was a little late because Sabonis isn't Jokic, and Herter isn't Curry, and Fox isn't Nash. But since 2010, no team has lost more games than the Sacramento Kings. They haven't made the playoffs since 2006. And yet, by combining the offensive principles of the NBA's reigning dynasty and its reigning MVP with a little pace and space sprinkled in, the Sacramento Kings, yes, the Sacramento Kings, have built one of the best offenses in the NBA, and it's made them a playoff quality team for the first time in 17 seasons. Big announcement, we've started another channel called More Thinking Basketball for shorts, extras, and other faster pieces of content. There's actually a one play breakdown up right now about how hard it is to guard the Warriors motion for 24 full seconds. We also have our new and improved daily leaderboards on patreon.com slash thinking basketball with the stats that I use every day to research and make videos like this one. Thanks so much for watching all the way through and wherever you are, I hope you are having a great day.